بسم الله الصلاة والسلام وعلى رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين By the grace and mercy of Allah, we will be starting our third class on the course Nawaqid al-Islam, the book by Shaykh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab and the explanation of Shaykh Haytham Sarhan. As it's the usual for our classes, we'll start the class by questioning what we have taught in the last few weeks. Whoever is ready, they can raise their hands up or else I will start picking random brothers or sisters. Brothers can come on the mic and sisters can type in the text messages. First question, Samir Sayyid, why are we studying the waqid? Shouldn't we study something like the good things about Islam rather than the things that take us out of Islam? Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We study these nullifiers, nawaqid, to protect ourselves first and foremost, uh, and then also others. Zakallah So we're studying this to protect ourselves from falling into these nawaqid and also to warn others so they don't come and fall into these nawaqid. Zakallah khair. Uh, Bashir, what is a nawaqid? What do um, you mean? And... Do you mean the same yes, example? Uh, a naqid uh, linguistically, I think, is you know, something that it's like a nullifier. I believe it's something that will take you out of Islam. Exactly. Okay. It's a nullifier, anything that takes you out of the fold of Islam, i.e., the person committing that no longer remains a Muslim. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Next question Fazal Has anyone other than the author wrote about the nawaqid? Uh, yes, it was uh, compiled in uh, from different shiukh, but he was the first one who did it in a, in a separate book. Exactly. Many scholars have written in books of fiqh about nawaqid, but the Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab was the first one to write a separate book on the subject. We then mentioned and spoke about the first nawaqid, which was shirk. And we said shirk are two types. Who can give me the types of shirk? Abu Huraira, what are the types of shirk? Assalamu alaikum. There's a shirk uh, kabir, uh, like a shirk al asghar and shirk al akbar. <coughs> shirk al akbar, the major shirk, and we have minor shirk. shirk. Yes. Adil Khalid, what is the difference between akbar and asghar? What is the difference between shirk akbar and shirk asghar? Paragolafik, um, shirk, as- shirk al asghar um, does not take you out of the fold of Islam, while shirk al akbar takes you out of the fold of Islam. Zakh excellent. Uh, Abu Ibrahim, one more difference between Shirk Akbar and Shirk Aswar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, shirk, shirk Akbar, it invalidates all your good deeds. So if, you, if a person was to commit it, all their good deeds are null and void. And the Askar, it um, doesn't invalid, invalidate all the deeds. It just invalidates the act, the special act that the person is doing. The minor shirk. Excellent. So Shirk Akbar, whoever performs it, all of his actions are gone. Whereas Shirk Asghar, that action that Shirk Asghar was performed in, that action is null and void. What is... Shirk Akbar. Oh, how do you know if a sin is Akbar or Asghar? Abdul Hakim. How do we know? Sorry, Yusuf. Yusuf was there. Yusuf, how do we know if the Shirk is Akbar or Asghar? Yusuf? <coughs> okay, Abdul Hakim. How do you know? Can you hear me all right, uh, Mr. Yes, I can hear you, Abdul Hakim. Uh, we know the difference between Shirk Al Akbar. In Shirk al Asbar, in the Quran, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned um, a shirk or kufr with Aleph and Lam, we know that it is a uh, major, major shirk. Exactly. And uh, yes. if it's void of Allah using Aleph and Lam, then we know that it is talking about Shirk al Asbar. Shukran. Zakh Abdul Akim. Excellent. If an Aleph and Lam, Al comes, then it's Akbar. Without that, it's Asbar. Also, another difference. A major a big difference most of the time you hear that if the action or the person doing the action is cursed la'an for example Allah says la'natullah Allah has sent la'na or removed him from his mercy or compared him to animals then that sin is a major sin 
And then we said the types of al-muharramat. Types of al-muharramat. Uh, Zahid, what are the four types of the muharramat? <coughs> Zahid, the four types of muharramat. Assalamu alaikum. Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. I don't know. I did, I, I did, I did not attend the class. Okay, no problem. Anyone else? Uh, Adiba, Salim, if you can write the four types of al muharramat. And then we also mentioned Bint Naim. Muharramat is the sins. We said there are four types of sins or four types of prohibitions. I'll explain that. So that was first was we said Shirkul Akbar, Jazakallah Khair, Farhana, Shirk Akbar, Shirk Asghar, and then we said major sins and minor sins. Any sister, if you can type the types of sacrifice for other than Allah. What are the type of sacrifice for other than Allah? Sisters, not brothers. The types of sacrifice for other than Allah. This is open for all sisters. Haram, permissible, and permissible. Legislated, forbidden, permissible. Zakallah khair. So there are three types that the Sheikh mentioned. We said one that is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thirdly, that which is permissible. But which one is the one that Shaykh was referring as shirk? One of them was shirk. Which one is shirk and prohibited? Which type of dhabh we are referring to that takes you out of the fold of Islam? Sisters, sacrificing for other than Allah out of love and veneration for those people. Jazakallah khair nida, for example, sacrificing for the magicians, i.e. the magicians ask you to sacrifice, but they ask you to sacrifice for the jinn. That was aqsam or dhab. And then we said naqid al-thani, the second invalidator, was anyone that puts intermediaries between himself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he relies upon them and asks them for shafa'a. And we studied the types of shafa'a. Continuing on from the second naqid, the Sheikh first says, is it permissible for someone to say to someone else, make dua for me? You see a lot of people asking others to make dua for them. Is this allowed or not? If this request has humility, i.e. you belittle yourself in front of that individual and you ask them, to make dua, then this becomes shirk asghar. You see some people go grab the hands and legs of the peer sahab and belittle and put the head down and ask shirk sahab, peer sahab, make dua. This form is shirk asghar. But if generally you're asking a righteous individual to make dua for you, then that is no problem. But always the best thing is, always the best is, for you to make dua yourself. Because no one is going to make dua for you the way you are going to make dua for yourself. So the best is to make dua. You can ask the righteous people to make dua. But to belittle yourself, to be in a state of humility in front of them, you know, go grab the hands and legs and, and you know, put your head down and ask them, this is comes under, under shirk. And then the shaykh uses another word, وَيَتَوَكَّلُ عَلَيْهِمْ i.e. whoever trust or has tawakkul on these intermediaries other than Allah, kafar, says has done kufr. Now what is tawakkul and how can tawakkul be shirk? Firstly, what does tawakkul mean? Tawakkul means huwa sidqul i'timadi ala Allahi ma'a thiqati bihi wal akhthi bil asbab. Three conditions, three things have to be in tawakkul. Firstly, you rely upon Allah, reliance upon Allah, number one. And that you trust that Allah can give or deliver what you ask. So number one again, that relying upon Allah, tawakkul is relying upon Allah. Secondly, that you have full belief that Allah is able to give you what you ask. Thirdly, third thing is that you take the appropriate means. That you take the appropriate means. If any of these is missing from tawakkul, your tawakkul is naqis. 
Some people say, I rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he doesn't do anything. He's sitting home, he's saying, risk comes from Allah. Yes, risk comes from Allah, but you need to go out and you need to work for that risk. So, tawakkul has to have these three conditions. If your tawakkul doesn't have these three, your tawakkul is naqis, is not full. But what are the types of tawakkul? The tawakkul that the Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab here is referring to, that is shirk akbar, if you do it for other than Allah, is shirk akbar, if you believe the one you're relying upon has the ability in of and in of, and, and of themselves to bring harm or bring benefit, that's a kufr. Some people believe in the saints, in the awliya, that they can directly harm you. If they don't want you to go Jannah, you will not go Jannah. The people actually believe that. That sort of tawakkul is shirk akbar mukhrujun al millah. That takes you out of the fold of Islam. That's number one. That's the one the Shaykh is referring to. The second type is shirk, just like the one I've mentioned earlier on. It goes to a pious person, righteous person, or the peace of whoever. And in state of humility, in a state of iftiqar, belittles himself in front of him to ask him to bring good or harm. He doesn't believe that this person directly has can bring harm. I, he doesn't control everything. But he gives him a status above the status he deserves. Then this is shirk asghar. I.e. belittling yourself in front of others and you're relying upon them fully. This is shirk asghar. And then we have tawakkul that is ja'iz. I.e. I rely upon you to get something done for me. I rely upon you to do a task to go outside, do some shopping for me or anything else. But my actual belief, I know that Allah is the doer and you are the means. The correct tawakkul is that you know Allah is the one that has control over everything. But Allah has set means for me to achieve that thing. That is jaiz, that is permissible. So again, tawakkul has to have three conditions. That you rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that you trust Allah is capable of delivering what you ask. And thirdly, you take the correct means. Next is the third invalidator. Sheikh mentions, مَنْ لَمْ يُكَفِّرِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ أَوْ شَكَّ فِي كُفْرِهِمْ أَوْ صَحَّحَ مَذْهَبَهُمْ كَفَرْ Whoever does not declare the kufr, disbelief of the pagans, or has doubts about the kufr, disbelief, or considers their madhab, way of life religion as correct or valid such a one has fallen into disbelief by consensus this to many of us it seems really clear why would the sheikh mention this here but unfortunately in recent times we see this a lot firstly what does this mean it means whoever living currently that does not believe that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the final messenger and doesn't follow his religion is a kafir, whoever they are, and they're outside the fold of Islam, and they will be in Jahannam for eternity, regardless Christians, Jews, because there are people now that say Christians and Jews come under Ahlul Kitab, i.e. they're believers. They're going against this naqid. What's the dalil for this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا Whoever seeks other than Islam as a religion, it will not be accepted from him, and in hereafter he will be amongst the losers. Allah says, Inna dina inda Allahi Islam. Inna ad-din, indeed, without a doubt, without a shak, the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. Anyone that does not believe in Islam is a kafir. And not a Muslim. And also the evidence that the other religions, Jews and Christians of this time, are not Muslims is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِهِ لَا يَسْمَعُ بِي أَحَدٌ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ يَهُودِيٌّ وَلَا نَصْرَانِيٌّ ثُمَّ يَمُوتُ وَلَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِالَّذِي أُرْسِلْتُ بِهِ إِلَّا كَانَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ Rasulullah said, by him, in whose hand is the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Anyone from the people of the Jews or the Christians who hears about me and, and dies not believing in what have been sent with, 
except that he will be from the people of Jahannam. Rasul made an oath, any Jew, any Christian that has about me and doesn't believe in me, he will be from the people of Jahannam. But now this raises a big question, which has confused especially a lot of youth, that okay, they're kuffar, they're non-Muslims, how do we deal with them? In dealing with kuffar, Muslims are categorized into three. In dealing with kuffar, Muslims generally fall in one of these three categories. We say two extremists and one on the correct and middle path. Two groups are extremists and one on the middle path. We have a group of Muslims that join the kuffar in their special gatherings, in, the, in their religious gatherings in the Eids of Kuffar and the mix fully with the Kuffar. Christmas, no problem, he's joining. Diwali, Indian, he, no problem, he's joining. Halloween, he's there. Any act or any Eid of Kuffar, he's there with them. Their re religious ritual rites, he's there with them. This person is an extremist. And then opposite of that, we have Muslims who say these people are Kuffar, Therefore, we should not be loyal to them. Any contracts we made with them are void. We can betray them. We can steal from them. And we can harm them. There are some Muslims who believe this, unfortunately. And they follow that. And this is again a group of extremists. These people are extremists. And the way of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and the correct way is that we do not participate in their religious gatherings. We do not participate in their Eid, Ayat. We do not participate with them. We differentiate between our deen and their religion. But at the same time, if we have a contract between us and them, we honor that contract. We do not transgress against their rights. We do not believe that their wealth and, 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 and their money is halal. You can just go and take it like this. And we treat them with nice manners. And we call them to Tawheed. We call them to Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the correct way and the way of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So we have two extremist groups and one group on the path of the Salaf and on the path of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. I hope that is clear. The fourth naqid, the fourth invalidator, the Shaykh says, مَنْ اعْتَقَدَ أَنَّ غَيْرَ هَدِّي النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَكْمَلُ مِنْ هَدِّيهِ أَوْ أَنَّ حُكْمَ غَيْرِهِ أَحْسَنُ مِنْ حُكْمِهِ كَالَّذِينَ يُفَضِّلُونَ حُكْمَ الطَّوَاغِيتِ عَلَى حُكْمِهِ فَهُوَ كَافِر the belief that the guidance of someone other than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is more perfect, perfect than his guidance. Or that the ruling of other than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is better than his ruling. Or the permissibility of accepting the ruling from other than what Allah has revealed. So that is the fourth invalidator. Anyone that believes that Anyone other than Muhammad وسلم, can have a better guidance or their methods can be better than the way of Muhammad, Muhammad وسلم, that person is kafir. Or they prefer the hukm of tawaqeet. Tawaqeet we, we discussed in detail in our class of Uthul Thalatha. Inshallah, maybe in the future again, we, we may go through that book again. Now again, this subject or this naqid has caused a lot of confusion. And a lot of people have lost the correct path by misunderstanding this. Or also misunderstanding another verse of Quran, Allah says, Whoever does not rule by the rule of Allah, they are kuffar. Now, what does this mean? If anyone believes that the laws of Islam are not good, or if he believes that the current laws we have are better than the laws of Islam, or if he says that you you heard that a lot of time that Islamic rulings are for all all times they're not suitable applicable now, then this person has left the fold of Islam. This person has left the fold of Islam. Where confusion arises is this person he believes that other rules are better or equal to the law of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This person is kafir. But if there is an individual that believes the rules of, and laws of Allah are better. It's more appropriate to implement the laws of Allah. But out of worldly desires, he rules by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worldly desires, i.e. to gain wealth, 
or to gain a position in the parliament, anything, then this person does not become a kafir. What's the difference? The first one believes the laws of Allah are not applicable nowadays, or laws of or other laws are better than the law of Allah, or equal to the law of Allah. His belief is the thing that makes him a kafir. But if we have someone who says, no, the laws of Allah are better, but because his iman is weak, he rules by other than the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or because out of his love for the worldly things, he wants wealth, he wants acquire wealth or position in the government, he rules by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this person does not become a kafir. And majority of the rulers of today fall in the second category, unless we explicitly hear or see from them that they say, no, we don't want the rules of Islam or the, our rules are better than that. In that case, scholars can give the ruling of takfir. But majority of the rulers, they fall in the, in the second one, i.e. because of wealth or anything else, the rule by a rule of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they do not become disbelievers and they do not become kuffar. And also, who made this just for the rulers? Who said this ayah only talks about the rulers? He says, whoever does not rule, you as a father in the family, you are the ruler, you are responsible for those people. So if you take out people, if you take out the rulers out of Islam, if they don't rule by the rule of Allah, that means even a father, if he's not just, and he doesn't implement all the laws of Allah in his house, we should declare him a kafir too, if you go with that principle. I.e. nowadays, for example, we have uh, parents giving equal to a boy and, and a girl, where we know as Islam gives twice to the boy and one half to the girl. So if a father gives more to the girl than the boy, do we say he's kafir? No, no one says that. So if someone makes a mistake or out of ignorance or anything else rules about other than the rule of Allah does not become a kafir. So we said the one that Shaykh is referring to, if you read the text again, he says the belief that the guidance of someone other than Prophet is more perfect than his guidance. He has to believe that. The thing that takes him out of Islam is the belief. Al-Naqib Al-Khamis, the fifth invalidator of Islam. من أبغض شيئا مما جاء به الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم ولو عمل به كفر أنور Whoever hates anything of what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came with has committed kufr, disbelief even if he practices it i.e. that the thing which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has come with Zakallah. So anyone who does not like the rules of Sharia and doesn't like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded, even if he acts upon it, even if he outwardly act upon it, he's still a kafir. If he, for example, says, what is this hajj? Why do you have to wear this white cloth and go make hajj? If he says all of this, even if he made hajj in his life, he's still a kafir because he's degrading or belittling the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, This is because they hate that which Allah has sent down. So he has made their deeds fruitless. I.e. the actions have become null and void. The actions have become zero. Why? Because they hate the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتْ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Allah says, but know by your Lord, Qasim, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decision and accept them with full submission. This is an azim verse. This should solve all our problems. That when you hear that Muhammad Sallallahu said this and you have a position on something and the hadith comes, you should just submit. And you should have nothing in your heart against that decision. And this is a dangerous thing we see today. A lot of people, they have a disagreement with you and you give them the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They say, no, but so-and-so said this. Ya Akhi, subhanAllah. I gave you the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you're saying so-and-so said this. So this verse is, everyone should go and study the meaning of this verse. Allah says, an oath, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ Know by your Lord, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
la yu'minuna nafi al-iman Allah says they do not believe hatta yuhakkimuka fi ma shajara bainum until you are the judge in the disagreement and after you give your decision they don't find anything in their heart against this decision wa yusallimu taslima and they fully submit this should be the, the way of a muslim whoever whatever you learned before whatever your madhhab is if a statement from muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam come khalas that's a full and final problem solved that should be the final ruling that you take take but now we're talking about loving and hating for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving and hating for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the greatest parts of iman but the question is who should we love and who should we hate things we should love are four actions people times and places actions people time and places and the same thing with pe- things we should hate action people times and places what are the actions we should love anything that please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all acts of worship tawhid we should love that people all the prophets angels the righteous people we should love times special times like like lailatul qadr the last third of night arafa these are the times that a muslim should love <coughs> places just like makkah medina the places that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam loved these are the four things that a muslim should love and he should and he should base his love on this and things that he should hate actions that allah is not pleased with like sins or shirk people like mushrikeen munafiqeen or the people of sin shayateen times the times that other than allah is worshiped like the time when the sun worshipers worship the sun places any places that other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worshiped now the sheikh brought a question is a woman taken out of islam if she dislikes polygamy she doesn't like that her husband has more than one wife the mashaykh have explained that she is not hating the ruling that allah has given she's not hating the ruling that allah has given she's hating that the fact that she doesn't want does not want to share her husband and this is natural this does not take a woman out of the fold of islam the last naqid that we will study today naqid as-sadis the sixth invalidator and this is a really important one man istahza'a bi shay'in min deen ar-rasul aw aw thawab Allah aw iqabih kafar wa ad-dalil qawluhu ta'ala qul abillahi wa ayatihi wa rasuli kuntum tastahzi'un la ta'tadhiru qad kafartum ba'da imanikum brother anwar whoever ridicules scorns or makes mockery of anything of the religion of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam its rewards or its punishment has committed kufr disbelief allah the most high says say was it allah and his ayat proof signs and revelations and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you were mocking make no excuse you have disbelieved after you had you had believed jazakallah khair allah almustaan this is something that unfortunately really common among us muslims that they mock the sha'a sim of islam the symbols of islam at times the mock a hadith or verses sometimes even not even realizing that this is kufr it takes you outside the fold of islam this verse allah says qul abillahi wa ayatihi wa rasuli kuntum tastahzi'un qad la ta'tadhiru qad kafartum ba'da imanikum do not make any excuses you have disbelieved after your iman this is a story of some people when they were returning from a battle they mentioned that the companions of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they they are lazy they are fat and chubby and they can't fight so another sahabi heard these people talking like this about the companions and he said i'm going to tell rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he came and informed rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and these people who were mocking the sahaba like this they rushed behind and they came to tell muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we were just 
laughing and joking, having a laugh. Before they could say anything, Rasulullah said, قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ You are mocking about Allah and His Messenger. لا تعتذروا. Do not give any excuse. قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ You have disbelieved after you were believers. So, istihza, mockery, mocking the deen, mocking the symbols of Islam, mocking a hadith, mocking verses of Quran, mocking the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kufr. And the person or the person that curses Islam, that is kufr, is kufr akbar, is outside the fold of Islam. And that if he does not, does not repent in lifetime, he will abide in Jahannam forever. And Allah's ref refuge is sought. And as for the person that is sitting in those gatherings where Islam is being mocked or being cursed, then it's wajib, wajib, must upon him to refute that. A yunkir, you refute that and you tell them no in that gathering. If you cannot or if you don't dare to open your mouth and defend Islam, then it's wajib upon you to get up and leave from that gathering. You cannot sit in a gathering where Islam is mocked or where Allah is cursed, his messenger is cursed. You either do inkar or if you're not able to, you leave. Because the person that sits with them while they're mocking is same as them. You sit and you enjoy the gathering, then you're same as them. Or someone that goes to other people and relays the story of what happened in, a, in that gathering without doing inkar, again, he's same. The dalil is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. وَقَدْ نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الْكِتَابِ أَنْ إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ يُكْفَرُ بِهَا وَيُسْتَهْزَوْ بِهَا فَلَا تَقْعُودُوا مَعَهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُودُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِهِ إِنَّكُمْ إِذَا مِثْلُهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and it has already been revealed to you in the book, this Quran, that when you hear the verses of Allah being denied and mocked at, then do not sit with them until they engage in a talk other than that. But if you stayed with them, certainly in that case, you would be like them. Now, if someone that has mocked or cursed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is his tawbah accepted? He said, yes, he's accepted if he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firstly and frees himself from what he has said. And that you can see the effects of tawbah, i.e. remorses what he said. That is for cursing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum. We'll stop here. We've studied six until six nawaqid. Inshallah, we'll try to finish the class in the next dars. Bidin Allah ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha. Mustaqfirullah alayhi wa alaykum. Mustaqfirullah alayhi wa alaykum. Mustaqfirullah alayhi wa alaykum. Next class probably will be our last class, inshallah. Assalamu alaykum wa 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 alaykum wa